Hi, everybody. Mr. Hayes here. Coming back, and we're finishing up some stuff on type 1 and type 2 errors. And this is going on with what happens if we make the, if the data that we collect has us draw the wrong conclusion. So the setup here is this. Alternative hypothesis, or the null hypothesis is true. Alternative hypothesis is true. So the top is, this is what's actually going on. The left side over here is the conclusions that we make. So over here, what happens if we reject the null hypothesis? Well, if the alternative hypothesis is true, fine, no problem. However, if the alternative hypothesis is true, then we get type 1 error. Okay, so that means that we're saying we're, 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 yeah, we're basically rejecting the truth. We're saying, you know what, we have evidence that this is not true, and when in fact it is. Okay, this would be the same, the, the classic version of stats is this. This is somebody who's innocent of a crime, however they get convicted of that crime. Okay, guilty person goes to, or an innocent person goes to jail. If we fail to reject the null hypothesis, so we don't have any evidence to say, you know what we're seeing, fails to reject the hypothesis, is great if your null hypothesis is true. Somebody's innocent, they don't get convicted of the crime, they go free. Yay. However, what happens if the alternative hypothesis is really true and we don't have enough evidence to overturn it? That's, we get a type two error. And there's ways you can go around that, and some of it we've talked about, you know, reducing your standard deviation, increasing your sample size, things like that. But this is basically where somebody who is guilty of a crime, and again, this is the classic stats thing, ends up going free. Okay, and we'll talk more about this and give you some more examples as we go. It's not the, it's one of those things where you really kind of get a sense of where things are going. Remember, the type 1 error is the one that we can control. Okay, type 1 error the null hypothesis is true, we end up rejecting the null hypothesis, okay? And the setup for that there is this. That's supposed to be an alpha value. Does that look good? So that's going to equal whatever our alpha value is, okay? So that's what we're setting. Is it 5%, 10%, 1%, half a percent? At what point, and as I said in the previous video, you kind of have to decide what happens if this one is wrong. So the null hypothesis in context is true, but we end up finding convincing evidence saying, yeah, you know what? The alternative hypothesis is actually what should be going on. And again, you're going to write this out and you're going to put context in both of those. And I'll show you an example here in a second. The other one is a type two error <clears throat> where the alternative hypothesis is true, but we don't have enough evidence to say that what the norm is, the null hypothesis is, we should reject it. Okay, so we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So the alternative hypothesis in context is true, but we don't find convincing evidence for the alternative hypothesis. And again, as I said, that's one of those things where I think the example we did yesterday, you know, 20% of the people in that suggested that the resume with the white name should be called in versus the resume with the typically black name comes in. Um, whereas, sorry, whereas, and that was only because we had 15 people out of each group, okay? Once they got bigger, that drove that number down. And so that's something else where, again, you can kind of control what's going on by trying to figure out how can I narrow down that Z value as much as possible, okay? And that's a lot of actually what happened with the 2020 election when they started calling states and stuff is that they had so much convincing evidence because the sample size was so large they were able to make that smaller. All right. So how does this look in context? That's probably what you really care about. So Mr. Hayes purchased a trick coin that's supposed to land up 70 heads up 75% of the time. One of his students volunteers to test the claim. The student flips the coin 50 times, finds the coin, lands up heads up 35 times. The student then performs the hypothesis at an alpha value of 0 0.10, significance level. Null hypothesis, the coin is fine. The null hypothesis or the alternative hypothesis is that it doesn't work. Okay, it's less than 75%. So go ahead, um, <clears throat> where P is the true proportion of tosses, the coins would be landing heads up. So go ahead, pause the video, go through some of these examples. Notes again are linked down below, and we'll see you in a minute. All right, so describe the type 1 error and the type 2 error in this setting. So type 1 error says this. The coin works as advertised it does actually flip and land heads up 75% of the time. But the student finds convincing evidence that the coin is not working. 
that the probability that they're getting is less than 75%, and that they get a p-value that is less than 10% in this case. Okay, So we're seeing that what we're seeing only happens less than 10% of the time. Type 2 error, the coin does not work as advertised, so p is actually less than 75%, but the student doesn't find convincing evidence of that. Okay, It says, well, you know, this... What I'm seeing might happen 12% of the time, 15% of the time, purely by chance. So therefore, I can't reject on, on our null hypothesis. So with that being said, we'll move on to the next one. So which type of error may result in Mr. Hayes returning the coin and writing a negative review of the product? Well, <clears throat> let's come back here. For me to write a negative review or re to return this coin, I would have to say I have evidence to say that it's not as good as what it is. So which one of these accepts the alternative hypothesis? And that is the first one. So the coin's working, but I have evidence to say that it's not. Okay, it's just one of those, hey, it happened, you know, well, in our case, 9% of the time. So there we go. Okay, so Mr. Hayes returns the coin in a type 1 advertise, if, for a type 1 error. It's supposed to work. It does work as advertised. We just happened to see it. I actually had that happen with a waffle iron. I couldn't turn it off. I looked in the directions, didn't have anything to it. First waffle iron I'd ever seen that has an on and off switch. Never told it to it. We returned it, got the next one back, was cleaning it off, noticed there was an on off switch. I know. What can I say? If the student were to use a alpha value of 0.05% instead of an alpha value of 10%. Would this make it more likely or less likely to reject the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true? Okay, so again, notice here it says we're rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. Again, that is going to be type 1 error, okay? So if I'm reducing this, am I going to get wrong evidence more or less? And the question, the answer is it's going to happen less. So... <clears throat> When I reject the null hypothesis, when the null hypothesis is true, that's a type 1 error. The way that we can control that is through our alpha value. Because again, remember we're saying what we're seeing purely by chance happens this much. That's our probability. This right here is saying that I will have that happen 10% of the time. Anything less than 10%, we're saying that's good enough. This is saying it has to be under 5%. And so because of that, reducing our alpha value will make a type 1 error less likely. All right. Now, again, this is one of those topics, really important, particularly if you're using statistics. And it's one of those things that gets a little tricky. So it's one of those ones where it's good to read it, look at some examples, put it aside, come back a couple hours a day later, and do it again. You got to let your mind have a chance to go ahead and look around it. We'll try to do a couple more examples like this in class. And we'll see where things go. And then we've got one more thing to hit. We're going to talk about how power tomorrow. I know, it's exciting, isn't it? Anyway, hope this helps. Hope you're doing okay. As always, talk to your teacher, talk to me, leave comments down below, like, subscribe, all that other stuff. I don't have a Patreon, don't worry. Um, and we'll talk to you soon.